Hello friends, this video on coal and petroleum part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will see how exactly do we separate the various constituents of petroleum. In fact, that is what is done inside a petroleum refinery. So what happens here is, it is an industrial plant where petroleum is separated into its various constituents. So now what we are going to see is how exactly this separation takes place inside a refinery. So we are going to understand the process of separating the constituents of petroleum. Now the process by which it happens, the separation happens is a simple distillation process mostly. Now what are the various components into which it gets divided? So let us quickly look at the various constituents. First is LPG that is liquefied petroleum gas and I am sure all of you are very much known to this name because LPG is something which is there inside your kitchen, inside the cylinders which helps us in cooking. Petrol, kerosene diesel, lubricating oil, paraffin wax. So these are all various components of petroleum. So if we are able to separate petroleum into its constituents, we get each of these separately and then we can use them in different ways. For example, petrol is used as a motor fuel. Diesel is also used as a motor fuel. Kerosene is used for lightning lamps. Lubricating oil is again used for lubrication to smoothen the surfaces in machineries. Paraffin wax is used for making candles and uh, many other types of products. So that means different components can be used in different ways. But petroleum or the crude oil as such is not of much use to us. Therefore, this process of refining of petroleum is extremely important. Okay, so last but not the list, bitumen. It is extremely useful for construction of roads. So let us see how the process of uh, petroleum processing takes place. So it is a simple distillation process which helps to obtain finished petroleum products. So what do we have? We have uh, a chamber, a distillation chamber of this kind which is often termed as a distillation column. And this is the crude oil. So the crude oil is being fed from this end and in this chamber the crude oil is heated. Now as you heat this crude oil what happens is different components of the crude oil they boil they have different boiling temperatures so different components will boil at different temperatures and as they boil so each and every component will get collected in different sections of this column that is why it is called a distillation column because the entire tube is divided into chambers and Whichever component boils at a particular temperature that will get collected at a particular chamber. So as you see here, the lowest temperature is at the top and the highest temperature is at the bottom. So those components which boil at higher temperatures, they will get collected here. A little lower temperature will get collected here, yet lower will get collected here. Finally, those which get boiled at the lowest temperature will get collected here. So that's how the components will get separated. So the lighter products, for example, LPG will boil at lower temperature. So they will get collected towards the top of this distillation column. Whereas the heaviest products like uh, maybe paraffin wax or lubricating oil, they will get collected towards the higher end of the temperature. Sometimes, in fact, some of the products might even go to temperatures as higher as 1000 degree Fahrenheit as well. So now let us see how exactly we get the various components. So the topmost layer that is the lowest temperature basically that is occupied by gas the lighter gases like butane and other lighter components the next section is taken up by petrol or gasoline whatever you call it yet below that comes kerosene below that you get diesel or light gas oil below that you get heavy gas oil and at the bottom, that is at the highest temperatures, you get stuffs like paraffin wax, lubricating oil and others. So now all these things, they boil at different temperatures. For example, for petrol, they boil somewhere around 70 degrees Celsius. 
again for if you talk about kerosene they again boil somewhere around 120 or 130 degrees celsius the diesel they boil above 200 degrees celsius heavy gas oil they boil somewhere around 300 degrees celsius so all of these components they boil at different temperatures and that's how we are able to segregate them and then we can take out each of them separately from the same distillation column so this is how petroleum gets separated into its components so now let us quickly look at the importance of the various petroleum products so we will start with lpg that is liquefied petroleum gas it is a fuel which is used for domestic cooking purposes so as you would have seen the cylinders inside your cylinders you have lpg petrol it is a fuel for vehicles so mostly your cars and bikes they run on petrol it is also used as a solvent for dry cleaning so that is also it helps kerosene it is used as an aviation fuel in the aircraft industry so when the when, when you travel by flights always remember that the fuel that is being used there so you have kerosene playing an important role there so it acts as the base fuel it is also used as a solvent in a lot of stuffs like paints, cleaners, pesticides, etc. Diesel again, it is also used for fuel, mostly for heavy vehicles. So if you see vehicles like trucks and vans, they mostly run on diesel. It is also used as a fuel for generators, generators and motors you would have seen in your apartments and all. So they all run on diesel. Next is lubricating oil which helps in lubrication. Now for example in a car if you see this lubricating oil plays a very important role because it helps to keep the moving parts of the engine from grinding together or from creating friction. So when the two surfaces become more rough then a lot of I mean too much of friction gets created so lubrication helps to reduce that it also plays a very important role in industries that operate a lot of machineries and vehicles because there you have a lot of friction between different machine machine parts so there also this lubricating oil turns out to be extremely useful paraffin wax it is used to make candles ointment vaseline it is also used as a sealant for jars and bottles so which actually helps to seal them so that that's some of the places where you see paraffin wax and last but not the least bitumen it is extremely useful in construction of roads have you ever seen how roads are being constructed or have you ever seen how roads are smoothed on the top so if you have ever come across, you will see that bitumen is that substance which acts as uh, a glue. So it, when it is mixed with aggregate particles, so it creates a concrete. So it acts as the glue. So when you put some small, small particles on the glue, so they all stick to it. And that's how the road is smoothened or the smooth surface of the road is done with the help of bitumen. So bitumen is one very important component of petroleum. In fact, not only bitumen, if you look at petrol or diesel, they are also very much important because due to their presence, the, the motor fuel, I mean, they are all act as motor fuel. So many vehicles run on roads and most of them use petrol or diesel. It is also helpful in sealing flat roofs because of, again, wherever you have to seal something, wherever you have to put a layer of something. So some anything which acts like glue will be helpful and that's what bitumen does. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.